Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode, Two Tamers Talk. This combo, we've been needing this for so long. The two of us doing an episode. I'm so excited. I've been having a blast. In case you guys didn't know, I was gone for a little bit. I was overseas working. And I get to have the pleasure of watching all of you guys doing these episodes. This is another and J and J combination. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was kind of the joke when Wayward first started, is there was four original J names. I remember someone caught it in the comments and mentioned it. It was so shout out to you, my guy. But, you know, it, I just remember seeing this. I was like, you know, Justin and I haven't done one of these. Yeah. And I was like, and then you and I were messaging, too, on Discord. Uh, um, we were kind of talking. So this, for me, this started because I was really curious about that Muchomon, Red mm -hmm. Rookie Rush, Uko deck. I love that deck. I love seeing that list. It's so much my style. I know you guys are going to shoot a deck profile video soon. Yeah, so deck list coming soon. Deck list is coming soon. That's, that's for oh, sure. Yeah. And that is, oh, it's already out as of right now? Deck list is already out. That's I love that deck. I'm a big fan of that. And so I was messaging you about that. And I was asking you basically, like, why is this not the top deck? Sure. Right? Sure. Like with the um the ban list now in effect, it's now March 1st. Our, our, you know, rest in peace to Pokemon because I really wanted to play full you, power. You, you didn't want to play full I power Pokemon, I promise. You don't understand, right? So, BT2, my brother just got home from deployment and I gave him a deck with Dark Master Megazoo with that Piedmon Metal Seedramon because that was back when I was playing for archetypes and fun. Sure, you know, you sure. can get away a little bit more in BT2 versus now where you kind of can't really do that anymore. And so I remember showing him Piedmont. He's like, oh, I love this. And I was like, yeah, dude, Piedmont is, the, <laughs> you know, is, is awesome. You bring out two Vilemons. Yeah. Whoa, starter deck Vilemons or whatever. But you also played it for 11. So yeah, you, know, yeah, you played it for 11, right? But it was kind of fun to watch your opponent with five cards in hand do something with 11 memory. Sometimes they'd run out back yeah, in so, those days. I mean, it was it was a way yeah, different time. Yeah, way sure. different time. So, like, I was so excited for full power Pokemon. I, you know, obviously it is an overpowered deck. Mm -hmm. It is good for the game for it to be restricted. Do not get me wrong. But man, I wanted to play it. I wanted to show up. I wanted to play you, it as you, a, such a big Dark Masters fan, you know? I think it's fun if you're yeah. piloting it. Yeah. But if you're doing the mirror or playing against it, man. No, the mirror would be awful. That the sucks. Yeah, you guys, you guys covered that perfectly on an earlier episode where you guys talked about playing the mirror where, you know, if they mill your Apocalypse, like, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, it's like luck of the draw, who gets it, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, we were talking about this and we were, you know, I was writing down some notes for an episode I wanted to talk to you about and, you know, kind of going through the last couple episodes and I just kind of wanted to pick your brain about some things yeah for sure for sure right so i guess my first question is in this current meta or just in general mm -hmm. what do you think makes a top deck a top deck like what are like the defining characteristics that go this is a top deck because of this because it has answers to this or yeah. is it a counter what, what what are your thoughts on that so decks in card games they're pretty interesting uh digimon is not an online card game so it's, yes. there's no ladder uh, it not having a ladder, it's actually kind of it's it's a bit harder to figure out the best deck because a lot of the times, if it was a an online card game, it would go down to the statistics. It's like sure. how good does a deck perform in ladder? Sure. And it depends on the format. Um, yeah. So certain card games would run conquest. So like conquest is you bring three decks and your opponent bans one, so you have two decks. Sure. So you can kind of interact more in the triangle. But Digimon is none of those things. Um, the best decks in the so far that we've seen, and this is from like a historical standpoint, yeah. are decks that are either very, very, very heavily uninteractable. Um, my brother, he was a professional card game player, yeah. and he yeah, played yeah, yeah. his specialty decks. Specialty is he was playing in a conquest format, uh -huh. so he had to play multiple decks. Gotcha. Is he played decks that you couldn't interact with? He called them solitaire decks, and that's what a lot of people called them. Sure, uh, sure. Try to kill your opponent in one turn, make it so they can't break a board. Yeah. And those decks end up being good because if it's an OTK deck, for example, yep. uh, your opponent dies on a timer, meaning they can not they can do very little or not that much to yeah. stop it. Um, the OTK decks in this game, however, have a small caveat where your OTK decks must be able to deal with the floodgates that stop them. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of those decks, uh, for example, the Black War Gray OTK strategy gets kind of choked out by memory floodgates sure um so you can kind of take that philosophy and look at some of the best decks in the game uh let's, the most recent one that's kind of stuck around for a long time is red hybrids yeah uh, yeah yeah red hybrids has access to phenomenal cards that speed up the game a lot they have access to a very very strong memory setter that when you evolve over it you can gain your memory back 
and you can cheat out your things. Have an inheritable too on a memory center tamer, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, I know. It's crazy, it's, right? It's crazy. They have access to cards like Gravity Crush and Atomic Inferno. Those de- those cards speed up the game tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we're seeing uh, additions where we kind of tweak the the deck a little bit and play Ukumons to get another raising phase. Yep. And yep. that deck is strong because it, once again, puts your opponent on a timer. Not in the same sense as an OTK deck, Yeah. but in the sense that you have to deal with me or mm. kill me before I win. Yep. Um, and a lot of the times, uh, you'll hear me and Basil say say this a lot about decks, the decks lose to themselves. That's actually good because yeah. it means you are not losing to your opponent. No, I feel that way for sure. Yeah. So, I feel that way for sure when a, when a deck is really good and it loses. Like, that's how I feel about Blue Flare. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like Blue Flare really only loses to itself when you don't get its pe- your pieces. Yeah. And, you know? and, here, and I like that you mentioned Blue Flare because it does lose to itself, but it has actual problems. Um, yeah. So this is, you can kind of compare. Yeah, this uh, would be like a difference, a deck to take it to that top level. Right, right. Uh, Blue Flare has the problem where your opponent needs to uh, has the ability to play around it. And what I mean by sure. that is the blue flare at its strongest is when decks put out two bodies yeah. and they stay there. And then blue flare swings 17 times and gains 5 billion memory and you're dead. Right? Yeah. That's the good part. But if a person that has knowledge of the deck, they will never, ever, ever leave two bodies on the board. Yeah. They will always know your damage range. Sure. And the last thing that makes a deck very good is how efficient is it? Yeah. How efficient does it do its stuff in terms of resources? Absolutely. So um, one of the decks that uh, you know, won Worlds is Anubis and or not not Worlds, excuse me, uh, U- U.S. Nats. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Anubis very very memory efficient. It cheats out two level sixes like nothing. It spawns a ton of stuff. It plays amazing cards. It gains seventeen billion memory. And if you don't yeah. kill the Anubis that turn, they'll do it again yeah. and gain seven memory yep. and kill you. Uh, that's a phenomenal deck. So it's kind of weird because yeah. there's some niche cases to this where, uh, for example, security control. Yeah. Is it a really memory efficient deck? It gets there, but its first few turns are horrible. Well, I definitely think Magna Ace has improved the memory efficiency. Oh, yeah. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Like, for sure. For I, sure. Like, you know, you know, and it, it's, it's interesting that you can kind of borrow memory, right? Because yeah. it's got the overflow mm-hmm. on it. But if you turn one, instead of paying seven for regular Magna Dramon, mm-hmm. You pay four for Magna Ace, you heal, and then you're kind of, you know, borrowing three memory with the overflow. Yeah. You know, I, I almost think that that's a little bit more efficient than, you know, I the mean, standard spe- seven drop. L- like, playing it for four and then evolving into a boss monster, either yeah. Venus Mon or Shadow Seraphi, those are super disruptive. Sure. And that kind of brings us to the other side of, of the good decks, is how disruptive is the deck. Yeah. Um, the rookie Floodgate Rush... It's not always the best because there's some decks that just deal with floodgates really easily uh, because they don't really care about it. Well, it's interesting because for me, as a big rookie rush player, who I've been Mm -hmm. playing it since the beginning, I I loved it as soon as as soon as somebody in Japan posted the first list on that Digimon group. That's my blue green with Papamon. I was like, I get it. I love it. It makes Mm -hmm. you know you play those two costs Mm -hmm. right, and so now we've transitioned from rookie rush going from blue green to a green yellow to Mm -hmm. you know red whatever all these different colors. But now it's like there's almost no two cost rookies anymore, mm-hmm. right? So now it's all three cost designed to stop your opponent doing things. And I always thought that that was an interesting transition. And so that's something that that's why I was asking you about that mm-hmm. deck because that's something I don't understand. Where did the two cost go? Yeah, it's just like uh, there's this 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 game has been out for for however long, three yeah. years, right? Yeah. At this point, and eventually the text gets so good. Yeah. And people will complain about power creep and cards being too strong. But if p- things didn't get better, people would have no reason to buy product, and sure. people would have no reason to continue playing the game. Yeah, there has to be new mechanics, and th- decks have to do cool things. Yep. and that usually means they have to either get more memory efficient, they yep. have to get more text on them, yep. or they just have to do some very archetype thing that's of really course. strong. Right? Of course, people wouldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh if the cards had one line of text. Yeah, for you sure. know, like I in, mean, way back when in 1999. Yeah. I mean, now, that's what I play when you play a vanilla body. You know, that's probably you know symptoms of what I am now. Yeah, where I like them still to this day. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's it's interesting because, like I said, we were having this conversation about the Uko Red Rush and just kind of like what the top decks were going to be, and we're still kind of at a point where we just don't know what the top deck is right now at yeah, the we moment kind of, we have an idea it's yeah, like it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a combination of like levy new Mimon, red hybrid yeah the and new I Mimon. it's crazy i don't want to go into the specifics of those decks because once you play them you kind of figure it out sure. but the reason why those decks are so good is because they do something that's 
yeah. amazing. Like they do something tremendously well. Yeah. And that's kind of the uh, characteristics, I guess. Yeah. Do you think there's any one piece that any of those decks are missing to take it over to the top, you know? Or do you think that the game has done a decent job of balancing those at the moment? Because one of my questions I was going to ask is like something you would want in the future uh, uh, to be added to a deck, like either a mechanic, mm. a way to exploit the memory system or whatever, right? To make something that much stronger. Sure. Right? Uh, I think those decks in particular, like, they're not, it's not necessarily that they're missing something. Yeah. Is that when you bring something to the forefront, a lot of people's gut reaction is not necessarily to play it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you get players like me and Basil where we see, like, oh, uh, Anubis Mana is the best deck for Nats. Play yep. it. Okay? Yeah. Yep. And then we play it. But there are a lot of people, and this is the majority of players, is they see that and they attempt to make the deck they're currently playing or make a deck that tries to beat it. Yep. And this is kind of the response you get unless a deck is so overwhelmingly strong, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Anubis Pokemon, where people don't really build around it. Sure. But uh, in this format, especially this format, because the Numemon is a quite strong strategy. Yeah. However, it's not unbeatable, and there's ways to, like, play around it, I guess. Either sure. run them down or play things that make stop them from playing things by effect. And that's the gut reaction. So, okay, Newman Mount is strong. Oh, okay, if Newman Mount is strong, it plays things by effect. Oh, Levy is a good counter into it because we yep. play Binding Crush. We play yeah. we play Levy X and we can kill their board and it's memory efficient and all these other things. And then, oh, they play things by effect. Red Hybrid, I can play Crimson Blaze. I can play these things around it. Yep. I can blow up their boss monsters. I can rush them down. And yep. that's the kind of reaction you get in a healthy... I say healthy loosely, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of stop. That's what stops things from taking over. Gotcha. And when things do take over, like if Numemon got some really, really memory efficient cards, I mean, it already got one. This it, is kind yep. of why I went from like a tier three deck to a tier one deck is that Numemon X Anybody is yeah. a crazy card. I love the design of Numemon X Anybody, by the way. One of the best X Anybody designs sure. I've ever seen. I think it's way nicer instead of just adding sharp pointy things onto <laughs> yeah. an X antibody. It's like a cool color scheme with like I love the X on the eyes too. It's it has it on the tongue or something. Solid design know. for Numemon X antibody. But that card is. But is... the card, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, uh, quite good. Yeah. So well, that brings me to my next point, right? You were talking about the whole Anubis Mon at regionals. You guys went down there or nationals, excuse me, sorry. Um, you guys went down there. You guys kicked butt. Took some serious names play the Nubus Mon because it's the top deck. Mm -hmm. And a lot of thing on the on the episodes, you know, when I was watching them when I was overseas or just kind of going back and doing some research was you guys talk a lot about practice, mm -hmm. right? Uh, insert what Alan, Alan Iverson quote here, I'm talking about practice, right? <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I'm a guitar player, right? You know, I, I noodle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the big thing is I can sit there and I can play the pentatonic scale over and over again. Mm -hmm. Or I can sit there and play the Holy Diver riff because I'm a big... Dio fan over and over again, but I'm not going to get any better mm -hmm. because it's not intentional practice, mm -hmm. right? So for you guys, when you guys sit there and you say you're practicing, right? If you don't mind, what does it? What is like you guys being intentional? What is your intentional practice? What are things you're looking for when you're sitting there testing things out, right? Mm -hmm. So practice, it's kind of pretty, it's pretty abstract. It's, it is with card games, yeah, right? Because you can't sit there and perfectly be like, well, I have this level four right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to use it, you know, or I have the option I was looking for. Because mm -hmm. you, you could build a deck, you make a change, and then the next five games, you don't see that card you put in. Yeah. So card games are weird because sometimes the fruits of your labor aren't always present. They're mm -hmm. not always obvious. They're not always, like, readily apparent. Um, sure. You can make a ton of changes in your deck and see one a one percent change which is really really hard to visualize yep. um e even in like even in events you can go like seven and two and be like i have no idea why i went seven and two yeah or you can completely lose out and and sometimes it's luck based for sure it's a card game right and that's the problem in card games you can always always blame luck not yep. that you should yep yeah but a yep. lot of people tend to blame luck yeah and that's not a bad thing because sometimes variance and this is why i Whenever I talk about luck, I, I describe it as variance. Because yep. when you're playing a card game, you are not necessarily looking at like results. Like, I went 4-0 with this deck at my locals. That means it's really, really good. Y yeah. If you yeah. go 4-0 yeah. at your locals 20 times, the deck is probably good. Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Um, but for, for practice, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it comes down to, first of all, the most obvious form of practice is know what your deck does and know it well. Okay. Know every single line the deck has. Okay. Because 
if you are put in a situation where you're yeah. low on time, you're against security control, you should be able to do a line without thinking. Sure. You shouldn't even have to think because you've practiced it, right? Yeah. And those are the easy ones. It's uh, it's execution. Yeah. The thing is, though, is that anyone can evolve Goblimon, Ogremon, Blue Mara into Anubis. It's the same no matter what player yeah. you're talking to, right? Obviously, the Blue Well, it depends. Do they stack the cards sideways or up top? I'm <laughs> yeah. just but no matter what, that per like evolving and playing the game mechanics doesn't actually yeah. make a good player. Sure. A lot of it comes down to the deck building uh, because... And again, anyone can evolve into Goblimon, yeah. but not every single person will be like, I tested so much against sure. Biting Crush Leviamon yeah. that I had to play Black Ottoman Uber yeah. because that was one of the things we missed. Um, so for What's funny, because a lot of times you guys talk about this Black Ottoman Uber, and I totally get why it's a thing. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But my, my thing is, is putting a one of mm -hmm. Black Otto in a 50 card deck, you, you could be at the bottom of your deck the entire tournament. You, never, you yeah. may never get it. Like, what justifies putting it as a one of versus a two of? Because something that I struggle with personally is I'll build a deck, you know, and a lot of times what I'll do, my first draft of a deck is nothing is in the deck except what is going to make the combo that I have intended to do first. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I like, that's how I like to do it. Yeah, first. like the archetype. Cards, the archetype, right? right? Like, I'm going to go, this is the archetype, not just because I want to play birds because they're birds, but because I want to see what all of the cards do, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm going to go from there. Okay, I'm going to adjust my threes, my fours, whatever, to account for meta, to account for opponent's mm -hmm. decks, to account for the fact that, okay, yes, this archetype thing was supposed to do this, but it's not even worth it, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I struggle when I have that second, third draft of a deck after I've figured out what the deck's supposed to do. Right, I've right. adjusted it for ratios that I like and things that I like, and I'm playing at locals, not changing more than one thing at a time. As mm. a big science guy, right? You know, we were told in science class, you form a, you know, a, yeah, a yeah. hypothesis, you change one variable, and then you do tests to figure out you if know, it's that, good, or, if not, it's good right? or not. But sometimes you just don't have the time to change one card. And then like with a 50-card deck where it's yeah. luck-based, you some, don't... I have, some, I have some bad news for you. Right? So it's like, <laughs> so what's the answer? Is it more games where you're making one change at a time? Or is it, you, you know, you know? Yeah. So the bad answer or the bad news is, depending on how serious you are, you yeah. should be playing a lot of games. Okay. Okay. Um, general rule of thumb is change one or two cards, play 10 games with that new list. You think 10 is a good number? I think ten. Is I don't want to hold number. you to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna like well, sell T-shirts with it. But here's the problem: okay. is I'm playing ten games. Let's say I'm specifically practicing against the Anubis mirror, and sure. I play ten games. Sure. Well, what about the Leviathan mirror? Okay. Well, you should play ten games of that too. And that's not realistic. And that's no. that's no, 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 that's no. the sucky part. But yeah. that's actually how you should optimally practice. Okay. Um, it sucks because we don't have a ladder and you can't get multiple games across multiple decks. Yeah. So yeah, you don't yeah. really know how to like boil it down. Sure. One of the advices I have for that in particular is in your head, try your best to think of the top meta answers, especially if you plan on going sure. deep into a tournament. Sure. And break down what they're gonna play. So for the Nats tournament, I didn't think there was gonna be a lot of people that played the Biting Crush the Viamon okay. package, basically. I did think a lot of people were going to play the Anubis Mirror. Okay, so how do I tech against specifically for the Anubis Mirror? Sure. Play more Ruin modes, play some Nidhogs, beat them out in terms of efficiency, yeah. and that's your game plan with that. Okay, does that change compromise you super hard anywhere else? Yeah. And by that, it's like... If like you were I'm talking about against the Red Hybrids matchup, you mm -hmm. were talking about, you know, the Melga matchup, right? Like, you guys you guys did a great job uh, mm -hmm. uh, in earlier episodes talking about that, so, mm -hmm. for so, sure. So, boil it down. Uh, even though it's still a lot of games you should, uh, like, you want to test, but yeah. if you were, like, prepping for a very big tournament yeah. and you care a lot about it, you should be playing a ton of games. Like, a ton of games. The hard part of a tournament... That's a good thing. We love playing Digimon here. Right? We do. That's all 2,800 subscribers, guys. Thank you so much, by the way, for that. That's but a it, huge it, number. It, it sucks. I think yeah. I think um, people don't find that super fun, super engaging. No, especially, like, the mirror matchup. Especially yeah. if you're, like, two Mirrors top suck. decks going back Mirrors and forth blow. with the mirror. And the fact that, you know, you and Basil were sitting there talking like how you guys played X number of games against each other. Like, this is, like, the first thing that came into my head is, like, what are you guys looking for? And that's why why I'm asking about this intentional practice, like what defines a good practice session with the mirror sure, deck. Sure. But yeah, it's interesting, man. You know, it's crazy. You know what the sacrifices you got to make to be the top dog. And I, I think and all of you guys watching that are willing to get better. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the crummy part too. Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Um, even if you do practice, 
I wouldn't say I practiced a ton, but I did play Anubismon for that Ultimate Cup. Yeah. I went six and three, which is fine by sure. my standards. Sure, you know? sure, sure. But sometimes you will get rolled by luck. You will yep. get rolled by variance. However, you have to determine Con. if that variance is your fault. Yeah. Um, if your list sucks, I, don't, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but it's not luck. Your list sucks. It's not luck. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, you're, if you are saying, I'm bricking too much, I wish this card was X. I can't find my. I can't seem to find my line consistently. I can't tell if it's me or the deck. Uh, it's probably with the deck. I feel like that's what I say to Jessmon players. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw some Jessmon hate. That's just me. You guys missed it, right? <laughs> but um, it's hard to tell, and yeah, um, yeah. you kind of have to do a lot of things to sure. to circumvent that. Uh, play a lot, obviously, because then yeah, you'll start. Yeah. Feel, you'll, you'll feel the tug either yeah. or. If you're yeah. winning a ton against a certain matchup, be skeptical. Sure. If you are winning a ton against a specific matchup, is the list bad? If you're, is, yeah, is, is your opponent not playing, playing it right, list, not right. playing a good list? Because I've had that happen to me, mm -hmm. right? where I'll go against a certain matchup that I thought I had in the bag, mm -hmm. and then I kind of realize, ooh, maybe I didn't get quite the practice I was hoping to yeah, get against and, that. And then you get misled by information. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. an information game, uh, knowing a lot of people that are quite competitive yeah. or just playing against people that have results because at the end of the day we can't quantify like yeah. who's the best player but we can say hey x person does considerably well over yeah. a large amount of tournaments right yeah so that either means that one they're like in the the 0.01 percentile of luck and yeah. like, the luck and anomaly which isn't the case yeah. right most of the time sure, if not sure, all the sure, time sure. then you play them and they probably have good advice and they probably ha play decks that are good yeah however you know, if you play against a guy that just wins locals once in every while, you can't really tell. And that's why it's really important to try to talk to people that have results yeah. or try to get into circles. Or even, even like me and Basil, we fostered a very good relationship by just playing a lot with each other. Absolutely. And eventually, uh, both of our results kind of reflect us playing a lot. And yeah. before before like now, we could have we could have just been bad players, but eventually yeah. we get to the point where like, okay, we can we can kind of ease uh, you'll you'll build some intuition and spot this card is yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Basil was saying earlier one of the ways I spot bad cards is if it's in my hand, and my immediate thought is this card sucks. I take it out. <laughs> <laughs> if the card isn't yep. doing good, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you know be skeptical. Is it sure, actually sure, sure. does it actually deserve a spot? And well, sometimes too you can go down the wrong rabbit hole. Not, I mean, I agree with that. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, but sometimes you'll be like, man, this card's not doing me anything. But that it's also for a different matchup. Mm -hmm. You know, again, so that, and that's the thing about compromising matchups is, yeah. like, OK, so it's good in this matchup. It's bad in another. How many uh, um, uh, of that called? deck are you going to play where that card is yeah. good? How against? many How compromises many not? can I make? Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that and makes sense. It's 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 there's no like one right answer besides. Yeah. Digging super deep and playing a lot and being really introspective. Uh, you can blame luck for sure. So what do you do against luck? Like, I know the answer is nothing. <laughs> right, don't get me wrong, but like, what is like a mind shift or you know, like a way to think about luck? You know, because I've had games where it's like clearly my only move is to go for lethal now mm -hmm. and hope I don't hit something and it's paid off. And I've also had the opposite where I went for lethal because it was I was gonna lose next turn anyways. I hit the one card I didn't want to hit in security and I lose, yeah, right? Or I've even had it where I have lethal, I don't necessarily need to go for it, but let's go for it. And I hit the one of 50 cards that mm -hmm. would have stopped me. You're right. So it's like, do you what do you do against luck? So no, it's, it's not necessarily like, what do you do against luck? But more like, what about like, what mindset do you put yourself in when you're accounting for luck? Right. For sure. For sure. I think the the ans the best answer is in poker. Right. There's professional poker players. Sure. And if you lose your entire bankroll as a bad poker player, yeah. you can easily blame luck. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. in poker, there's or you can blame bad, you know, financial decisions, you yeah. know, you but, but, you know, it's <laughs> but, but in poker, you can um, there's a term that's used a lot. Uh, there's this game. There's this thing called game theory optimal, okay. which basically tells you the expected value or EV for short. Sure. Sure. Of sure. Every decision that you can make in poker. Sure. For example, if you have this starting hand, you should always raise here. It has this expected value over the long term. Yeah. And whatnot. There was a there's a MIT like math professor sure. that played perfect GTO or game theory optimal mm -hmm. and won a million two million dollars. Sure. It doesn't work now because everyone knows it. Yeah. But way back when he Before. made all of his decisions based off of okay 
let's say this wins 60% of the time and I make X amount of money. You can do the math yeah. on your on your decisions. And then I kind of adopt that same play style for Digimon is let's say you do need to go for lethal. Sure. What are the times that it works and what are the times that it doesn't? If in your head, and obviously yeah. it's not a perfect calculation unless you go ahead and break it down yourself, which takes a while. Yep. If it's more than 51% of the time that you die on the next turn, right? Yeah. And if or if the OTK works more than 51% of the time, you should do it because sure. um, over the long period of time, you'll win more games yeah. than lose because of that decision. And you can kind of break down every single luck-based scenario technically with that, be like, okay, if I play yeah. a certain if I play a certain line, what are the odds that it wins? What are the odds that it loses? I gotcha, I gotcha. And then you can start doing the same thing for your decks. If you play a ton of game with your decks and mm -hmm. you have a 65% win rate with it. That's very good. Yeah. yeah Obviously, yeah. it won't. W you're playing nine rounds, so the chances of you winning a tournament are a lot lower than you think it is. Yeah. But over a long period of time, your results will show that hey, your deck has a sixty-five percent win ratio. And going going into the card games with that mindset will ultimately help you win more games than not because you're yeah. thinking about it in a more like objective way instead of being like, oh, I got I got unlucky. Yeah. Did you get unlucky, or yeah. was that? You know, you yeah. know, is is your decision making bad, or you're playing a deck that isn't gonna win that fifty one percent over yeah. a long period of time, and that's super nerdy. And I know a lot of people. No, that's don't. awesome. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know a lot of people like. Well, I was excited to do this episode because I kind of wanted something like not. You know, I obviously I, I love every episode we've ever done. You mm -hmm. know, I've definitely watched every episode we've ever done, and I, I think each one has value and has given something fun. Whether it's for people like me who grew up watching Digimon, it's just been such a huge. I've always loved Digimon and now it's like a cool card game versus those that are like, no, I'm here to compete and win. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's what I love about this channel. And, uh, I think we can continue to keep doing that. But yeah, one sure. last thing I want to ask you about, man, All right, shoot. And it's about green. Uh oh, I got, I got some yeah. unlucky yeah, opinions yeah, yeah, about yeah. this so, one. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I was just curious, man, what do you think of the green only events? So for me, um, last time I was in Taiwan of doing for work, I missed the purple only tournament this and time. I miss the green only tournament. So whatever color they're going to do next, I'll probably be overseas again because <laughs> I seem to miss it every time. And I, I it's bad because I want to play in these events. I like it when a tournament says it's restricted. You only get these choices. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. that like a uh, uh, illusion of choice can is, is sometimes a bad thing where you have too many choices. Mm -hmm. So if you found a green deck you liked, because I know we well, were talking about that too, you know, you were talking about uh, Leopard Mon with me, I think, at one point. I think you were mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, Bloom Lord because Basil plays it a lot. What's the Dude, answer, man? I, I, you got I, a favorite green deck yet? Or is it just Imperial with all the half green stuff? <laughs> I mean, Imperial is fun and all, but I, I couldn't play for that tournament. I ended up playing Bloom. You ended up playing uh, Bloom? I think it's a I good went, choice. I went three and one. Sure. The problem is, and this is kind of bad of me, but I, uh, I just stole a friend's deck. Yeah. Hopefully you it, gave it, it back. Well, I have to do this one first. Bad joke, uh, sorry. <laughs> but I played it. I went three and one. Uh, I didn't change any cards. It's got yeah. a little outdated. Yeah. I kind of just got rolled. Sure. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't know what any of these cards do. And that's a lesson to all the viewers. Read cards that you're expecting to play <laughs> play against. Yeah. I don't know. what Me Mega Gargamon says you can't evolve. Oh. That's I don't know what any of those green starter decks do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the new Terrier Mon decks, I have no idea what, what any of this stuff does. What would you have played if you were to join? Uh, I probably would have played... So it's funny because I was sitting here, right? And this kind of goes back to uh, um, something else I was thinking. But I had won an event with a green Mega Zoo deck. And I was like, oh, what if I just bring that back? Because you get you play four Grand Del Souls, you play all the green removal. You just have, just go stupid with it. I don't care, <laughs> right? You know, it's a just green, playing just, security just, control. You know, just playing like green. Like I said, you know, there's a lot of good ten cost greens, but I realized the whole value of that deck was the white level sevens and the blue Kaiser nail. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I can't do that. Great. So let's move on to the next thing. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Leo deck. So it probably would have been just straight up heavy Leo. Yeah. Even though I love Leopard Mon, I'm probably more comfortable with it. It's just something about the newest green thing that, mm. you know, that touches me pretty close. But, yeah, probably Heavy Leo would have been Heavy Leo. Answer. I think Heavy Leo is a great uh, option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I love, you know, the green gotcha variants of it. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I would have played the gotcha variant just because I haven't tested that as much as the standard one. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. 
I mean, it was a good choice. Let us know what yeah. on your green let us know only what, tournament. Yeah, let us know if not only that, you know, let us know if you found something new in green that you like that you didn't know before or you didn't like before or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, or you found some new appreciation for cards. Kind of like when you do a pre-release or event. Some, uh, and, hate for some or some cards. hate. We want to <laughs> hear it all. Please jump in the comments. Let us know. Yeah, so that you know that was kind of it for my laundry list of questions. So yeah, if I, anyone also has any questions yeah. about being competitive or how to prep for tournaments, jump in the comments. I'll yeah. read all of them. Uh, yeah. Me and Basil will try to respond to them. Yeah, you guys are great and, about that. Uh, we have um, the sec- how to beat security control coming soon. I'm excited to see that. I think that's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be really fun to do archetype meta breakdowns and stuff like that, or uh, archetype. Uh, uh, cards and yeah, let us know and stuff if you like want to make that a recurring series how to be i just X. want to say machine Dermont. i was the first person here to win locals machine Dermont. i have to put that on the record <laughs> ex1 bam bam i just want yeah, to not the original dude, OG turn machine one player. against jessmon i'll never forget i was able to hard play a machine Dermont because at all the pieces somehow the perfect god hand for machine Dermont <laughs> and one because you can do anything about it i i don't know how that happened i feel like for me when i win locals it's like Luck is on my side, which I know we just <laughs> talked about luck and stuff like that, but I have everything going for me. That was one of those days when I <laughs> won with Machine Dramon, and I haven't touched the deck since, uh, uh, unfortunately. I, I do love the Machine Dramon. I love all the Yeah, that the was cool a sick video, uh, too. It was really a great video. I love that. Uh, Let's but do that with uh, uh, everything else. Like, let's just, you know, why yeah, not? Yeah, we'll make, we'll, make, we'll make the How to Beat X a, a series. How to Beat Raiden Mon, you know? Well, everyone's going to watch that one, I think. Uh, you, they're, they're playing Raiden Mon. It's, it's called it's, Play it's Anything Else. Yeah, it's yeah, five yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but do you want to get on to some of the reveals? Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. So first here, I didn't know. I haven't seen this yet today, but we got some reveals of the training card alt arts. And I just want to say, first, two things I want to say. About time we get uh, alt arts for thank, training cards. Yeah, thank God. And two... There's two different alt arts being released at the same time. This is interesting. I had no idea. So, Adam, my favorite one, I think, is the Gatsumon Black training one or the Green Muchomon one. Those are the two favorites just because I'm just looking at them right away. But uh, it seems like they went a little overboard with the Digimon Liberator stuff. It must be because it's a brand new thing that they've yeah, uh, been talking so, about a sure. lot. But these look great. I'm super I mean, excited for did, these. Uh, and... for, for the original trainings, I, I like that they're sticking with the theme. Of like having a trainer because Pulsemon is yeah. in all of the training cards. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. did went pretty hard on the liberated stuff. I personally like the arts. I like. I like the arts. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Uh, the the Galgamon sitting there under the waterfall as he's like meditating, finding inner peace, getting ready to punch the people with them gloves. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great, dude. I it's like great. the uh, the red one where they're fighting because it's offense training. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like how they're thematic, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, I, I think so too. I like uh, uh, the trainings did do a good job of that with the you know wisdom trainings reading a book. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how you get smart, right? <laughs> I like I like the uh, the Goblimon is just lost in the now. In the, the I purple think one. this stuff came from the Digimon 25th anniversary Digimon Con video, right? I think so. So we haven't had a chance to watch that all the way through just because we've been busy. Um, but we we will have some thoughts on that at the end of these reveals. But here's some promo cards that got revealed for this. We have a promo Falcomon. They decided to give us to purple green. Yeah. How interesting is that? So on play, suspend one of your opponents level six or lower. So that's Kind of significant for level three. Mm-hmm. Then by placing this Digimon as the bottom Digivolution of one of your Digimon Brave Mon, that Digimon may attack an opponent's at Digimon. So that's that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. So you can get rid of level six when you need to, and then you can activate the uh, end of attack ability of Brave Mon. You know, I am a big Brave Mon player, a big fan of the deck. Yeah, we, need, we need four more pieces like this and a new boss. The monster. problem is Brave Mon's weakness is the reason why I like the Rose Mon deck a lot is because the level five plays Tamer so efficiently. There's no like restriction on if you already have. Yeah. Yoshina on board. The the level four is not a good card unless it's Togemon to play Tamers. For sure. Right. For sure. You know, Tyranomon's good too, but a lot of times you raise you're promoting in the raising area. Yeah. So the this, level four doesn't do anything, right? This archetype like still needs a lot. Is, it, is, the archetype is, needs a lot. So I'm glad they're getting stuff. I'm but, glad they're uh, getting stuff. The flame Dermon's really cool. Uh the all the art is 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 good. I really like it. Um it sometimes it's a little weird for me when the Digimon's not like the focus of it, yeah. but I understand that. I this really is, like the background. I really like the background too, yeah. man. These these, these yeah, cards it's are sick. Pretty. It's sick. So another armor purge. Um I like this one because it's armor purge raid. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Your turn once per turn when this Digimon is tech target is switched, your opponent adds top card of the security attack to the hand. Yeah, as a as so. a as a as I played a lot of armors. Uh, this yeah, card is really good. I love good. The armor stuff. The armor uh, stuff's fun. It has raid, which is crazy. Uh, any card that has keywords, it has two of them. It's quite good. Yeah. And this one just like burns a security, which is kind of crazy for a level four. I don't think. Yeah. 
a level four has done this off the top of my head. No, the, I mean, the closest thing I can think of, because it reminds me so much of Saber Dramon with the raid and retaliation, mm-hmm. right? But this is armor purge, and then it trashes the security. So it's they're both obviously valuable, and it's really going to be interesting what you do, because it, it just seems like armor purge gets so much every single... Yeah, set, you know, and I love it's it. It's still a little too slow. Yeah, but this card is crazy because you wouldn't think that deck is slow, but it is. Moving on. Yeah, so this one is probably my favorite because of how much I'm going to use it. <laughs> so the the next one is probably my favorite because of what it is, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Leo Mon X Antibody. I love this thing, man. So I I finally got you know because usually I have like a big mail haul when I get back from my overseas <laughs> trip. I got my set of the shiny Leo Mon X antibodies. Yeah. So I'm going to update that uh, Leo Mon Tribal deck that I've had in the back burner for a long time, mm-hmm. and now this is just going to replace it. So I, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's like we come on, too long. <laughs> but on play and when digivolving, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus three K. So that's cool. It's not bad. But all turns while Leo Mon or X Antibody, he gains Blocker and Fortitude. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. My favorite thing about this, though, is the inheritable. Yeah. On deletion, recovery plus one. That is insane. Yeah, for a level four. For uh, a level four to have an inheritable, that could just be a generic. I mean, so I'm, like I said, we were just talking about the uh, heavy Leo deck. Mm-hmm. And next set, I'm super excited because we get Mad Leo. And Mad mm-hmm. Leo, for me, is going to go in the deck. Mm-hmm. I'm even going to put Mad Leo in my Leo Mon tribal deck. I really like that Mad Leo is an actual tribal card that can be used and not just Bogger Army, mm-hmm. right? A good example of Digimon kind of taking advantage of all the different traits of things. They kind and of have to. Yeah, they kind of have to, Because right, they, right? they have a limited amount of They're not going to give you set yeah. two Dark Masters that aren't Dark Masters anymore, heaven forbid. So <laughs> They learned their lesson. They learned their lesson, right? So, But this next one is one of my favorites because of the tribes. Two of my mm. favorite tribes of decks to play, and I still haven't put a Mommy Mon deck profile video on the channel. Coming soon. But, uh, yeah. The <laughs> problem is you guys keep putting you guys keep putting too many good decks on the channel where like I can't put this jank on the channel. No, we anymore. need that. We need that. People don't want a seventh deck with ruin mode and death X. Are you sure? Are you sure about I think, that? Oh, I think <laughs> ever since you guys started jumping on, the subscribers have been jumping on. So let us know in the comments how badly you want a mommy mon deck profile video. Cause well, we gotta okay, ruin mode's like seventy dollars. If I tell another person to put ruin mode into deck, I think well, the, like the trick is, is you buy all the ruin modes and then you sell it to them through the channel, right? That's big brain <laughs> stocks right there. Just, we don't do that, guys. Promise, promise. <laughs> promise, promise. Uh, anyways, Mommy Tyrannomon Ultimate. Um, so what I love about this is that he is a... He, he is Mommy Mon and Tyrannomon he can digivolve on top of. He's got Collision and Blocker, which is pretty interesting. More keywords, always good. Always good. When opponent's Digimon becomes spending, may unsuspend this Digimon. And this is also treated as having Mommy Mon or Tyrannomon. Because, like, I know some of the times when it's Tyramon, like Mommy Tyramon, the set seven one, mm-hmm. that one doesn't count as a Tyranno. Because it's so there's no overlap. Right? Tyranno, right? So this has that overlap. They've been doing a lot better with having um, certain traits, keywords, or yeah. names in cards. Yeah. The new uh, three-colored Magnamon X Antibody, mm-hmm. it says ruling has free. One yep. of the big problems with the old Magnamon stuff is the Magnamon X Antibody didn't have free in it, which yeah. was a big problem. So it's always nice for them to start like branching off and realizing, hey, there's a lot of overlap. Sure, these tribes, sure, sure, so. sure. Might as well make the ruling for it, right? Yeah. And then, uh, um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to incorporate this into decks. I'll figure something out. This is one, the next one, this is a blue-green Mega Kabuterimon. Why do I love this card? For one reason, because he's a blue <laughs> Mega Kabuterimon, or Alter Kabuterimon for the Japanese fans. That name is way cooler than Mega Kabuterimon. <laughs> it just confuses things because, you know, Mega's, Mega level is level six where, you, you know, anyways, yeah, anyways, yeah. we have not had a blue Mega uh, Kabuterimon in the game yet. We've always had just the red one. And for me, like, I've wanted the blue one. Give me the blue. (laughs) So we finally get it. But he's all the way in this tiny little corner, and you can't see him. So I don't know. Well, to be fair, I do like the arts in the set. because Oh, the arts and all these promo cards are really really Yeah, the the, the direction specifically, especially with the Mamemon, where he's like, you you kind of see him charging under the silhouette of another. It's really, really cool. And this is kind of in the same vein. Yeah, so, you know, this one's got Evade. It's more insectoid stuff. Let's move on to the next one. This is a new V-Dramon. So very curious to see if this is going to be used very much. I think it is. On play, so it's only it's five costs, so the on play is not horrible, but the wind digivolving. Quite I good. like that cards are including on play and wind digivolving at the same time now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, reveal the top three. They don't want to make you feel bad for yeah. playing a level four. It's, basically, it's a V-Dramon searcher and a blue tamer, so it's really nice for the deck. Definitely curious to see what Old Force decks Old do Force with that. Old Force probably plays this, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it seems so consistent. 
Yeah, and so you guys ready for my favorite thing out of the reveals for BT17? <laughs> this is this is the nerd coming out. You ready? Out. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's not on your tablet because I just thought about it. I forgot to ask Jesse to put it on your tablet. Oh, okay. I thought it was... Never mind. It, that, well, this is the joke. Uh, black trains. Have you seen the black trains? Oh, my God. So I think everybody, when the black trains came out, if you're like me, wanted to build a black train deck. <laughs> so this black train, basically, you get to tuck like bodies underneath. So imagine tucking I'm like trying to picture metal Tyrannomon underneath to give it the inheritable. I'm totally putting you on the spot because we forgot to put them on the images here. <laughs> yeah. But guys, I'll just, we'll just put the black trains right here. Let us know how excited you are to play black trains. That's it's, I'm, I'm so lost. excited for And he's a machine. So analog man oh, too, you know. I'm like, surrounded by them. I can't get away. Yep, yep. Raiden Mon and Black Trains. But now for my real favorite reveal. Okay, this is what I was expecting. <laughs> well, I had to throw you for a loop because it's come on, man. I got to. <laughs> Parrot Mon. Finally. Fine. So okay, so I think BT17 is doing a good job, and it's it's funny because Bandai is obviously huge subscribers to our podcast. They realized exactly I predicted how you know this set was a set one redo. This one's a set two redo. And they're like, oh, we got to throw Jeff off. We're going to do a whole set based on movie cards. Yeah. So this is like all now they're going through all the movies with the Diaboramon and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm running out of time, so I don't have time to do a lore episode about why Bandai well, screwed up all the movies. If you guys want us to do a lore segment, let us know. I love doing that stuff, you know. But anyways, Parrotmon. I'm so excited for this. For me, I was I'm I I had part of my mail haul is I ordered a full playset of the Digimon Liberator stuff, mm -hmm. and so like my joke is going to be I'm not going to come until the Digimon Liberator stuff is legal, and that's what I would have played in the Green Only tournament <laughs> was the the Green Bird only stuff only three and four. So I was just thinking I was like, man, Paramon would be perfect for that set, and we finally get this Paramon. Effects kind of underwhelming, but I really like it. Uh, yeah, security at the fine. at the end of battle. If you don't have a Digimon, play this card without paying the cost. So it's a level five that comes out of security. Is that our first level five that comes out of security? I know we have Zwart Defeat so, as yeah. the highest level. Nothing's going to beat the level seven coming out. But I, I can't. I don't think four, there's yeah. a there's a um, medieval Duke Mon, medieval Gallant Mon that comes out. But he goes right back to hand. So mm -hmm. now we have a level five that comes out. It's really nice on play when Digivolving suspended from Digimon. It's really fine. like the it's, parrot. It's fine. It's not great, but you know, it's yeah. fine. And then we got a new promo for uh, a white uh, option. While you have a tamer, you can ignore the color's requirements, which is always nice when they include that. Main, choose one tamer. You may play one Digimon card with the same color as that tamer and with the play cost of three or less. So it's really nice being able to play a rookie like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be interesting to see how this how that works in the future. Yeah, this is another card that they're releasing that's just yeah. like universal support for every color. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be one color that abuses it the most. And yeah. every other color can't play it. So Yeah. Well, we're running out of time for this episode, so I'm going to keep this segment brief, so forgive me. But the Digimon 25th anniversary video dropped. They did a whole bunch of reveals. They revealed these promo cards. Mm -hmm. They talked a, a little bit about Digimon Liberators being a web comic. And uh, the first episode, <laughs> we have yeah. our new king. We have uh, Galactimon overthrowing War Greymon in this awesome tournament. All, all I got to say is, Owen Dreadnoughts, what were you doing? Yes. How did you lose to Galactimon yes. on War Grey? I love it. So maybe more Galactimon support in the you know future. We'll see. Maybe that becomes the next Tier Zero deck. Who yeah. knows? Uh, don't hold your breath on that. Um, but very excited. I do think just from what I've read as far as like the comments go and people talking about the vid the episode, they wanted a little bit more, which is a good spot. Mm -hmm. So let's take a moment to just appreciate Bandai is it giving was, us it was a preview, so think, much, so, you know, yeah. but I think a lot of people were like, well, where's the new game? Mm. And I know I am too that way because I've been desperately waiting for a new game that's not Digimon Survive. Survive was okay. I understand why it, people it liked fine. it. I'm not after a visual novel. I'm yeah. I read too much at work and when I do school and I want to have monsters fight and I love turn based games so that's what I want. Yeah, I want a yeah, new Digimon yeah. story game or whatever. So I'm very excited and and you know especially with the departure of the lead of the guy who's been developing a lot of the games and uh, a lot of times those games never even made it over to the U S. Yeah, so it's kind of like a translation issue. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I was if I was in charge of Bandai, it's probably why I'm not in charge of Bandai. I'd be like, just take all of our money. What do we have to do to <laughs> capture the English no, no, they're, they're market? Too, they're too Cap busy. Capture the young kids that are all into Pokemon. Let's, you know, like, why is Digimon Liberators a webcomic? Especially if people don't even know how to get to that webcomic easily. Yeah. Instead of, like, I don't know, have a Netflix special of four or five episodes. Just to be fair, one Netflix episode or special with yeah. some Digimon stuff doesn't have to be tied, doesn't have to be Agumon. You know, you already have the whole story for Digimon Seekers, right? Just make a Netflix special I wish they, I wish with they Digimon Seekers. Seekers, right? Right? Because I think Except a lot of game. people like that. A lot of, you know what I'm saying, man? Bandai, come on. 
what's what's the deal? Where's some some more content for us to to enjoy? Whether it's a new you know anime, whether it's a new uh, 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 video game, something. I just I just I see the need. I see the hole in the market. Sure. And sure. I don't understand why it's not being well, filled. We got One Piece making a ton of money on their card game. So yeah. buy yep. more Bandai products and maybe we'll get we'll get a <laughs> yeah. we'll get an anime series about yeah. the Digimon card game. Yeah, that, I mean the, that would be great. My only hope is that because they did it in the comics, yeah. which is awesome, or the web comic. Yeah. Uh, they said digital gate open, which is awesome. Yeah, it's I great. can't tell if that was specifically that came from Bandai. It came from our channel. No. I'm just kidding. I'm they, obviously kidding. Or if kidding. it came from I'm, Card Game Protagonist. It, it probably came from Card Game Shout out to Card Game Protagonist. I love that channel. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully we get more stuff. I mean, yeah, it's. I'm glad we're still getting a card game. It, the fact that it's lasted this long is is phenomenal. Yeah, because I know you and I have talked about this. We've loved Digimon since we were kids, yeah. and like for us to have a card game last that's this good. long, that's good. That's man. yeah, really good. Like the resource system's super unique, and it's the it's a blessing, right? Yeah, for still sure, have and, it for sure. I mean, and I love the look fact at all the sets. <sighs> I can't. This is how far we've gotten. I know. Uh, I love Digimon, so. man. I'm always gonna be. Digimon's always been one of my favorite franchises. Always will be. And I just, I, I say with all this stuff, with I want this to keep being a top franchise. So you know. Yeah, that's the hope. All we right, gotta, we got to get more kids on it. Jump probably. in the comments. Let us know what you thought of that little 25th Digimon Con video, and let us know your thoughts. We love hearing all about oh, yeah. this. Let us know your thoughts about the roadmap of combining our sets. Jesse keeps moving this timer in the corner, so obviously I got to hurry up. So we got to do cards of the week. So I'll let you go first. So that way. I uh, don't talk too long. <laughs> well, my card of the week is an old one. Okay. This is another purple card. I keep any. Let's up on go. These. Pur- best it's color. BT5 Demonic Disaster. It's a one cost purple option. Delete a card to unsuspend a purple Digimon. You just made uh, me so happy because I was a huge tact. I still am a huge Tactimon fan from BT5. And I love that card in that deck. Yeah, that card <laughs> surprised me. I'm just surprised that purple players didn't find a way to put it in already. You kind of see it. Some decks yeah. use it. Some decks don't. But uh, in the the Anubis fact that you mod, found room to fit that is really impressive in purple decks. Yeah, I'm well, I'm impressed. For what it's worth, the uh, Nubismon yeah. Gizmon cycle deck super sick. Deckless coming soon if it's not already out. Did you guys, I walked in today and you guys were recording it, so it's clearly coming soon. <laughs> so coming soon. Awesome card. It's really really fun. Yeah. It's a fail safe. It's another kill your own thing to make sure that your effects go off. So my card of the week is demonic disaster. Shout outs again to the Canadian player that. Hit me up in the DMs yeah. saying, you got you to gotta try this Slid list in the out. DMs for that stuff. So that's mine and yourself. Uh, mine is going to be Apocalypse. Rest in peace. Uh, mine is because of the fact that I really wanted to play it I think and I didn't get a chance. I think you're the only person ever that would put that as their card. I know, but, uh, but there's also another reason, too. So um, I, we shot the Raiden Mon video right before I left, and that was before I realized how expensive Rare Mons were. So I was fortunate at the beginning of the set with all those promo cards, I had bought my play sets of all the promo oh, cards lucky, for significantly lucky, cheaper lucky because I knew I was going to be using them and I didn't think they were going to jump in this price. I don't, I'm not here to play stonks. I don't as, make money on Digimon at all. I promise. Even, modes, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's, I don't make, I lose, I'm just in the hole on everything on Digimon, right? <laughs> Which is fine. I, I don't mind. But I'm sitting here making this video and people are like, oh, Rare Mon, so expensive. And I felt so bad. But also in those comments was, why don't you play a one of Apocalypse after the restriction? And I was like, not that bad. Makes, that, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that my that comment has stuck with me for a lot of decks. Like I'm working on a Myotismon deck. Why not play a one of Apocalypse? I was I was thinking about playing you know? an Anubismon, to like, be honest. Y- exactly. Like there, we're at a point now where you, we can do a one of. You know, like w- going back to that green mega zoo, it's part of the reason I've been thinking about it so much. Why not put a one of Apocalypse in that green mega zoo list? Because I have so many, you know, level sixes. I got the Kaiser nail. It's level sixes the bodies with play out. cost. That's that's what you want. With what? I'm sorry. Play uh, play effects. Oh yeah yeah yeah. And which that green mega zoo played the original Puppet Mon for mm-hmm. sure, and other on plays and stuff like that. And we were getting new on plays, but that Apocalypse Mon can go in a lot of decks. Yeah. It's just a one of very and, splashable. And, and that's that the main reason it. why. Yes, I wanted to play in the format with a full Apocalypse Mon. Kind of glad I didn't because maybe I wouldn't have liked to. I saw in the mirror, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I, you know, I think that comment specifically about why I'm not playing a one of in that Raiden Mon and just kind of inspired me for all the other decks in the future. Start mm-hmm. building, you know, decks with one of Apocalypse Mon. Yep, that's how it is for purple. One of Anubis everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just crazy to think because Anubis Mon. It, it's kind of been cannon fodder for so long in the Digimon franchise. Like, yeah. you know, and now it's it's kind of funny to see what cards become the top cards. Well, if it's not the mascot ones, because the mascot ones make sense. And yeah. then randomly, yeah. uh, I don't know, we'll yeah. see, see, I don't know, a Dobermon strategy be 
completely <laughs> oppressive or something. We'll get a ran- we'll get parent mon being a boss monster. There we go, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, hit if you haven't already liked this video, hit like for parent mon. We're so happy to finally have him in the card game. Let us know in the comments too. What Digimon you are waiting for patiently, whether it's the blue Mega Gobbicherrymon, whether it's Parrotmon, whatever it is, we want to know in the comments. Thank you so much. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to go play in a green only event. We are so excited. Thank you guys so much for tuning. And as always, every Friday, we have another one of these podcast episodes coming out. Who's going to be on it next week? We're not going to tell you. We'll have another good J&J luck figuring it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll we'll figure it out. Thanks. Bye. We're gonna, we're gonna.